Welcome to Winning Wall Street's Money. Help support my channel. We need to get to 1,000 subscribers pretty much as soon as possible. So then I go live streaming because YouTube policy that won't let me go live until I have 1,000 subscribers. Thank you to all the folks out there that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you have not yet, please take this moment now with helping me. Click subscribe. Next, click the bell. And next, click all. This helps you receive a notification when I post my next videos. Plus, click the thumbs up button and every time you watch my videos. If you got value from this video, if this was helpful, then please consider sharing a small monetary donation to my channel by going below and clicking on either my Patreon or PayPal links. If you join my Patreon page, then you'll get early access to these videos 24 hours before they're posted on the YouTube and lots more. If you prefer just leaving a small tip, click on PayPal. Either way, then you get that warm sense of satisfaction years down the line knowing that you helped me become a successful YouTuber. Thursday, October 27th, 0721 AM. Good morning. Let's do a recap of my overnight day trade. Yep, you could day trade overnight. Use the futures. So I have an account to trade futures as well as equity, forex options. I was bearish, so I placed a bearish position last night. I was bearish on the S&P 500 futures, the symbols forward slash ES. And I decided to trade options on the futures last night. So I did a credit spread. Yep. I went short at 8.32 p.m. This yellow arrow. And my position, as soon as I got filled, I put a working order to close for profits. And it closed there. I closed for 25%. Yep. So my short strike was the 39.10. And my delta was the 16. Look here. This is a 15-minute chart. This is the regular trading hours. And the gray area is the extended hours overnight. So here, seeing this yellow arrow, when I saw this bearish pin bar here, and it filled to close above here, because you had a swing high here, we tested the swing high, went higher, filled to close above it, formed the bearish pin bar. Yep, I took the risk, saying that's the supply area right now. The sellers there, proved there were sellers there, because that's how we closed. Waited for a break below here. We broke below it, the red candle. As soon as we broke below that green, Placed my working order on, got filled, short. And then overnight, as the market went down here lower, my position got closed. Thank goodness I wasn't too greedy because it could have went reverse and higher and taken me out. Well, it did go higher after that impulse moved down. But then now it's currently lower. New lows since overnight. This was the original low from opening overnight. We went lower. Yeah. So in hindsight, yeah, if, if I stayed in longer to target a higher profit, I would have made a higher profit. But that's risk. Had it risk. This was just a scalp. In a row. It wasn't a scalp. It wasn't for a few seconds. But it was fast. Like I said, got in, went short 8.32 p.m. and closed at 10.34. And this gray horizontal line, it was when I, that was the delta I used right there. So I did have a little, little further away. <clears throat> now let me show you the setup, what I was looking at on the higher time frames. But again, my trigger, my trigger was here on this 15 minutes. But my setup occurred on the higher time frame. So let's go first. Looking at the daily, this was yesterday's completed candle. When that completed, I was looking at this, okay. Well, it wasn't completed, it was still forming, but I was thinking, yep, because we have this big wick on top forming. More likely, we're going to go a little bit lower. We'll probably get that retest at some point. So currently, we have an inside candle today forming. Yeah. So we could expect a retracement, maybe even to the wick down here. But looking at the four hour, when I was doing all this, my charting, each of these four hours, I noticed this again, huge candle, four hour candle wick, oscillation. Well, my trade was just shy of this candle. So it was still here, 8, 8, 8, um, I said 832. But notice how we had this big wick up here, broke above the inside candle, 
the big wick, but failed to go higher, selling off. Okay, I'm gonna see that selling off. And it was about another 28 minutes till this candle got done. I was a little more bearish because again, it's a huge wick up there, rejection. Inside candle, hmm, on the top of a trend. Let me zoom out here. Yeah, so you had a top of a trend, that inside candle. Again, it was during this green candle when I was putting the trade on. I was pretty confident that, yeah, I'm going to trade bearish. Not expecting a full retracement so far down here. Could occur later on, but at that time I wasn't. Let's go look at this on the multiple other time frames now. Here on the two hour candle. And my time candle was here, this green one. So again, I'm seeing this rejection here. Big impulse move down on this two hour candle. Mm hmm. Typically the trend, strong down, almost a solid body. That green candle tested it, <laughs> made that huge wick on top. Bearish pin bar rejected. Yeah, gave me more confidence. Again, I'm looking at multiple time frames top down. Can you dig it? Yeah, one hour candle. When I saw that big red candle down there, I drew the midpoint saying, hey, when I trade a beer call spread, I'm going to use the strikes further up. And that's what I did. I used the strikes further up. My short strike was 39.10. I made sure it was above the high there too. Just because if there was a fast spike overnight, I wasn't going to get tested, hopefully. And it didn't. No no fast spike happened, but I was further up there. So during this time, when that uh, trade got put on, see it rolling over? Look at that huge impulse move down. And notice this too, my demands on buyers. That's what's holding up right now. So maybe I'll be putting a bull push spread on soon. Or maybe I'll just be during trading just outright bullish yep, on the uh, futures contracts. We'll see soon. Maybe a few more minutes I get ready. We're day trading scalping. Okay. Here are the 30 minutes. Again, I labeled this. That was earlier. I labeled this before I put my trade on. These are zones. The red is the supply zone. Greener demand zones, buyers. And look at that. Yep. I just showed you how it looked on the higher time frame. But look here on the 30 minute. Multiple rejections. This, this is no longer valid anymore. I have to update it. But it showed multiple rejections and buying down here. So these are zones. You can trade zones, zone to zone. Multiple time frames. I apply a top down. Yep. Very interesting on how this is going right now. We made a new low overnight, but we still still I still have not taken out yesterday's low because I showed you on the daily. It's inside candle. And look at that. I'm making this video, sharing good information with you. And I need to shut down or I want to shut down so I can start trading. Looking for trades. Mm-hmm. Are you bullish or are you bearish today? Do you have a Opinion on what the market's going to do today. I think we all have opinions on the long term. The market's bullish long term. Every time it goes down, I'm not talking about single stocks. I'm talking about the market overall. Those are retracements since the creation of the, let's say the S&P 500. We've been trading higher. We have pullbacks, dips, opportunities to buy for long-term investments. And this options I was trading here do expire today. But again, I'm already out of them. Okay. Let's uh, look at one more thing here to put something in perspective on the, oops, on the four hour. This is the highest intraday time frame I use. I go from the higher time frames above that monthly, weekly, daily, but intraday, the four hour gives a lot of information, a lot of information using candlestick chart reading. And you see these gray lines I use, these are waves. I typically don't use them on lower time frames. I draw them on my four hour time frame and higher time frame. Give, give me a perspective of strength. Well, because the longer the trend, regardless it's up or down, see that's a long trend. These are smaller trends. That's momentum. There's much more strength to the upside. And these are minor retracements. And patterns. So I showed a video. I showed on a video yesterday. There was a chart pattern. It was a head and shoulder. It was a bullish head and shoulder. So applying these on the higher time frames, I can also see trade signals and look for triggers on the faster time frames. So now applying these, if you notice, look how sporadic this is. There's tiny little trading ranges. So the strength to the upside may be getting weak. We're in a consolidation phase here. Pretty much for the two days, tight consolidation. 
Let's look at the daily. See the daily? The upside filled. So the body's here. Body's here. Tight acceleration range. A tight acceleration range, and then we had a sell off. So looking here in the four hour, we have a tight acceleration. And that's concerning. I'm seeing these smaller trends, shorter trends. Yeah, so a lot more short-term traders are in control of the market. I'll use caution of buying at these highs. Yep, I'll be looking for pullbacks if I'm going to buy on the bullish side. But I'm also looking for opportunities to trade bearish on the short term, which is what I did overnight. I wasn't marrying a trade. I wasn't investing in that trade. It was a day trade for that session. Got it? Good money management reply. Thank you, as always, for spending just a little bit of your time with me. You've gotten value from this video. If this was helpful, then please consider sharing a small monetary donation to my channel by going below and clicking on my PayPal or Venmo. You can leave a small tip. If you don't want to share financial support, no problem. Just click the like and subscribe and leave a comment, please.